Hi, it's Maxine. Today I'm finally doing my video that I've talked a lot about um, food sensitivities. And this is something I bring up a lot because I just wish that everyone had access to this information. It's an expensive well, I don't exactly remember how much because there was this other test I was supposed to get that I didn't get, but all in all it was like, I don't know, maybe up to $2,000 um, just to, s not just, but to see the naturopath get these tests done. And once I kind of had figured out my food sensitivities, I had paid a lot less attention to the other stuff because between that and keto low carb it really just helped significantly with my pain but with food sensitivities it's more than just um gut health um bowel and everything like that it's um i actually wrote down here what it can affect so this is what I got off Google with FWD Fuel Sports Nutrition, and I'll link the where I picked that up below. So it's um, common symptoms of food sensitivities. <laughs> I was feeling shy because there's people hanging around. I picked like a very busy location to do my video, so this is going to be <laughs> challenging. But anyway, uh. I want to make it short today <laughs> and I always say that and it's never short but today I feel like it's going to be short because I'm going to just stick to the point and not do too much extra talking because I, in a lot of my videos I have gone into depth about a lot more of this stuff but today is solely for food sensitivities. So fatigue, constipation, psoriasis, um, psoriasis eczema, Joint pain, bloating, acne, diarrhea, brain fog, nausea, throat mucus, headaches, migraines, impaired weight loss. And then I was going through, this might not be 100% accurate, but I was going through the similarities between food sensitivities and fibromyalgia and EDS, just to see. And... Some of these might be missing, but so fatigue, fibro, and EDS, constipation, well, digestive, you could kind of link that together, and EDS. Um, I don't know so much about skin issues with fibro and e EDS, except the soft skin, sensitive skin, so you could kind of include all those things. Joint pain, muscle pain, fibromyalgia, EDS, check. Bloating, well digestive, I don't know exactly, but um, possible. Brain fog, fibro and EDS. Diarrhea, um, well with digestive, like depends what part of the digestive system they're talking about. But, oh yes, well food sensitivity. But yeah, fibro and EDS, that's part of it. And um, headaches, migraines, fibromyalgia, brain fog, uh, fibromyalgia, EDS. So there's a lot of um, similarities. But I'll quickly just, so for me, yes, I've talked a lot about fatigue, constipation. Yes, I said that I literally suffered with that on and off for 20 years and I even had rectal surgery, which my next video will be about um, psoriasis, ex eczema. Um, thankfully, I don't get the big blotchy patches, but I do always have like dry skin dry and oily combo skin but very sensitive and my scalp is like pretty bad sometimes pretty much all year round the only time I've noticed a significant difference is if I actually don't wash it very much which I can't really go very long without washing my hair I just really bothers me <laughs> and uh Joint pain, yes, with fibromyalgia as well. Bloating, yes. 
Bloating is one of the main reasons I wanted to get tested for food sensitivities because I just felt like any time I ate anything, I just felt sick afterwards. And so you're probably wondering, well, if you're feeling sick from eating food, how are you fat? Shouldn't you be having the opposite problem where you're like t skinny from not being fearful of food and feeling sick from food? But when you're when you have an addictive personality and you're not drinking, not doing drugs, not like participating in other addictions and you're using food to cope, it's kind of like the same effect. Like they say it's just sugars, like just as addictive as drugs and stuff. So when you're using that as your method, you kind of get the same effect where you get like that energy or whatever kind of feeling and then you sort of crash. So it would be uncomfortable, but eventually, I guess, like, it kind of made me feel numb afterwards. Um, like, the crashing phase is, I guess, what I'm subconsciously... I'm trying to figure out, like, why, you know? I'm trying to find the reason behind some of the things, and that's kind of where my brain goes with that. So... Um, acne, diarrhea... Yes, I had like pretty bad acne. I still even get it and I'm 35 years old. I mean, it could be a number th of things like from touching my skin to, but sometimes it just does come on. And, um, diarrhea, unfortunately, yes. I do still struggle with that, but thank God I don't struggle with constipation much hardly ever anymore because I drink a lot of water I avoiding my food sensitivities as best I can helps <laughs> um brain fog so yes trouble with concentrating I am you know also diagnosed with ADHD and I'm autistic so that is something to do with that but maybe a lot of autistic and ADHD people happen to have a lot of food sensitivities, which I think a lot of people have food sensitivities and they're unaware of them. And people suggested to me, oh, just um, do like the, I can't remember the name of it, but where you eliminate foods and then you add them back in to see if you're reactive to it or not. But the thing with that, the only reason I didn't bother with that is because pretty much everything out there nowadays has so many different ingredients that to really figure out exactly what it would be would be almost next to impossible. That's why I decided to take, because I could like do one food one by one, but then when it comes to like, I don't know, veggie burgers and things like that like because I was vegetarian pescatarian for so long and sometimes there's ingredients and things you just wouldn't even suspect like when I was vegan vegetarian I couldn't even have McDonald's fries because they're cooked in beef stock <laughs> so there's a lot of things we don't realize and there's hidden ingredients so nausea um Ever since eliminating most of my food sensitivities, I don't really get that, thankfully, anymore. Throat mucus, I don't know. Maybe that's why my voice is kind of raspy sometimes, and but or is raspy, but um, that could also be from, like I said, trigger warning, but years of on and off um, eating disorders such as bulimia. Um, headaches, migraines, thankfully I don't get that much. It's usually brought on by like, you know, bright lights, loud sounds, um, smells like cologne or like tar on the road or just something like that, where if I can't get away from it in a certain time frame, then I probably will. And then I also get headaches just from like trying to quit caffeine on occasion like I'll have a pretty bad headache for a day but think so thankful I don't get that right now or very much I feel like I used to get a lot of headaches when I was a kid 
and and then I started to think like for example so my dad was a heavy duty chain smoker for all of my childhood in the house and then there'd be times where I'd go away for the weekend like for girl guides like camping and then by the end of the weekend I was just so miserable for some reason it's like I needed to be back but I almost wonder if I was like literally going through withdrawals like if somehow you know because they do say that when a person smokes weed in front of someone else that person like if it's in very close proximity like hot boxing or whatever that the I don't know what it is THC or something else shows up in their bloodstream so uh it's probably not impossible to think that the chain smoke affects the other person like more than we realize I mean that's why they do say like you know servers and stuff back in the day like in restaurants would get lung cancer and stuff um but next is <laughs> back in the day thank god when I was a kid that was like pretty much the end of that <laughs> sometime in the 90s probably um impaired weight loss so impaired weight loss does that mean trouble losing weight well then yes <laughs> and I have food sensitivities so now I'm gonna go through my list of my most elevated so with food sensitivities they give you this is done through the nature doctors in Winnipeg Manitoba because that's where I used to live on Waverly 1200 Waverly Street and so if you're really curious and you live in Winnipeg or surrounding area or you want to get more information you should definitely call them or another naturopathic doctor like in your city and so it's called like an RMA FST, IgG food, sensitive, food sensitivity test, order by reactivity report. So I remember her saying specifically that I do have a lot more than the average person. My elevated are cashews, barley, mushrooms. Alga wakame. I hope I'm saying that right. I don't know if some kind of seaweed or rice, pistachios, almonds, sole, potato, durum wheat, kola nut. I don't even know how to say that. I don't know what that is. G L I A D I N. <laughs> Someone tell me what that is. I should Google after this. Spelt, sunflower seeds, soybeans. So those are my worst ones that I should avoid. And for the most part, I do avoid those. I do have rice more often than I should. Um, potato more often than I should. I'm sure some of those wheats. Soy probably because it's like a sneaky hidden ingredient in so many things. Dressings, mayos. Um, what I want to do after this video is start to take this list more seriously and fully eliminate because I feel like I've just reduced, which reducing has helped a lot, but I should go to the next step and see what actually eliminating looks like. It's just really hard because I mean, if you think of all those things, okay, so no more sushi, no more, you know, I mean, there's certain sushi you can have without rice, but um, no more potato, no more fries, no more soy, which isn't everything. Like pretty much say goodbye to eating out, which I do have a problem with eating out because when you're just cooking for yourself, sometimes it's just not as the motivations lower for me. And, uh, so my borderline, so th that was elevated, my borderline. I'm not going to read all of them to you, but I'll just quickly show. The, 
the most, the two highest levels. So elevated, borderline, normal. So in the normal range, there's a whole bunch of things I can still eat. It's just that these elevated and borderline things are just so common in everything. Like how can you possibly, so in borderline, milk, cow and sheep, corn, celery, peas, yeast, milk, goat, milk, peanut, aloe vera, egg whites, wheat, bean, agar, or agar, oat, malt. So, like, okay, say goodbye to rice, say goodbye to potatoes, say goodbye to soy and all these things, and then almonds and mushrooms and all that, and then say goodbye to corn, celery, milk, peanuts, wheat egg whites like since I'm I don't eat meat I do eat eggs a lot in my diet and I'm not supposed to even have those <laughs> so it just really sucks um but maybe I will just quickly read what my normal and then maybe I can try to figure out how I can live a better life and change my diet without me I mean like I don't need eggs. I could just make stir fries for breakfast. I always use lots of veggies in my eggs in the morning. And I could have certain types of grain that I'm not allergic to. So that could be a substitute. I could have more avocado as a substitute. I could try to add more fish into my diet, even though I'd like to not do that. But here's my normal foods. Egg yolk, fig, bean, coffee, lentil, rabbit, haddock, tiger nut, raspberry, cucumber, mackerel, couscous, um, turnip, chickpea, avocado. There's just so many. I'm not going to read them all, but... Oh. I don't know if you're going to be able to read that, but if you want to pause. Well, that's not the most important thing anyway. But yeah, so there's a whole bunch of things I can have. It's just really hard to go without rice, almonds, pistachio, potato, sunflowers, like soy, barley, eggs, all kinds of milk, which... I I don't like having milk either. I know that it's for baby cows and baby animals and not for humans. It's just that it's like in everything. This list makes me want to go vegan again because if I can't even have eggs and if I'm not having milk anyway, then I may as well just go vegan, <laughs> which wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. And... Uh next I have this on my fridge every single day and I thought that would be like motivation to avoid those things but I still have eggs in my almost daily diet like I'm allergic to egg whites but well allergic sensitive to egg whites I'm they're pretty much allergies it's just not as severe as an allergy as you're gonna get like you're not gonna go into anaphylactic shock but you know, bloating and discomfort and skin issues and brain fog and all the things on the list, diarrhea, joint pain, throat mucus, like f impaired weight loss, fatigue, all those things. Like, why would you not avoid it? It's just hard. You have to think about, you know, if you avoid these things, it makes me wonder, well, if I avoid them, am I going to become even more sensitive to it? Like where if I have it on occasion, it's going to be an even worse reaction. But, and then, you know, you think about the times where I'm already like a pescatarian where I don't eat meat. And then having all these food sensitivities, it's like asking for special requests everywhere you go. Like it feels like you're a burden. Like, it, uh, eating is a huge part of our lives like whether you're skinny or fat like me like it's we need food to survive so when you have all these problems 
But the main thing is like, I just am here to share this with everybody because I really want other people to consider getting this test. Because how would you know that food sensitivities, not allergies, are causing things such as fatigue and joint pain and brain fog and migraines and so well some of them are seem a little bit more obvious like anything gut related or possibly skin but all the others like so so it's really nice that they give you a full list of pretty much everything out there like seafoods meats herbs spices vegetables fruits miscellaneous nuts grains, dairy, eggs. So it's really awesome because I have this list that I can always refer back to if I need. So, food reactions versus food allergies. Food reactions differ significantly from, and since I did quote where I got this from, hopefully, fine um differ significantly food allergies are immediate reactions that occur within minutes or hours of consuming a food and may include serious reactions like hives difficulty breathing and anaphylaxis in contrast food sensitivity is a delayed reaction that occurs hours to days after the food is consumed with symptoms that may not appear for days or months so lack of an IgG antibody response to a specific food does not rule out the possibility that the food may um, cause reaction. Patients should consume, continue to avoid foods to which they have known food allergies. Mm. Food sensitivities are not food allergies. When a reactive food is consumed, the antibody forms a complex with the food antigen. Normally, the body is able to eliminate these antibody antigen complexes, but with excess antigens, small complexes tend to deposit in blood vessel walls where they can cause tissue injury via the release of inflammation, inflammatory mediators over time, this tissue injury may contribute to a development of a variety of health conditions. Wow, I don't even remember reading this part. I'm sure I did at one point, but this was back in 2018 when I did this test. The elimination of the reactive foods in the diet improves a variety of health conditions such as irritable bowel syndrome, migraine headaches. Eliminating reactive foods has also reported to help with eczema, mood disturbances, weight gain, and other digestive disturbances. Wow. Mullen Lewis Ben. So I guess those are like the scientists or whoever taking these experiments so normal re reactions a normal reaction to a food antigen may indicate lack of recent exposure to that food hmm. therefore under cer under circumstances of complete avoidance it's impossible to determine whether the food avoided would cause a reaction if consumed recently so what it's saying is some of these in my normal in my normal foods might be a reaction but I wouldn't know because if I haven't had it recently I guess patient has a reaction to one or more food antigens not consumed regularly it is possible to have elevated food sensitivity is not recently consumed or food has been specifically avoided. Hmm. 
reactions, antibodies re may remain in circulation for 18 months, even with no exposure. You know, like, I don't know how naturopathic doctors feel about it. Like, I have no idea um, if they prefer to stay private or if they would like it to be included. I don't know. I mean, I guess to it is an expensive thing to do, but if more people had access to it, if if they had the funding by the government, would they get paid more per year? I don't know the answer to that, but I just think that every single person out there should have access to this information because it's like life changing. And all these people are taking these medications thinking that it's who knows and then it could just be literally food sensitivity it's not a allergy but a food sensitivity and how are you ever going to know unless you take these tests or yeah so i feel like that's something i've been wanting to talk more about for quite a long time and i'm glad that i'm finally doing it and i hope that my short little video here could like at least help somebody who's really struggling with this i'm just still reading some of this um I'm going to have to actually edit this video for once with all the pauses. So. So I think one of my family members has had this test done and they like you know, they felt like they weren't being heard by the people in their life. And then when they went, they kind of just had something that they don't normally have because it's a food sensitivity. And they like immediately had a reaction for like, they're just so bloated that their pants could barely fit and they're in a lot of discomfort. And I can just totally relate to that. And I think that's why I'm kind of lying to myself in a way saying, well, when I avoid these things, like my elevated best I can it strengthens my gut health so that when I do have other when I do have things on occasion it's not as bad as a reaction but it's still not pleasant like I just ate today a meal that's full of my alert my food sensitivities and I'm feeling discomfort it's like well no wonder I wear sweatpants all the time <laughs> something comfortable that's not gonna put pressure there so yeah, I just, uh, I hope that this video can help others. <laughs> there's people swimming down there because there's like so many health benefits to swimming in salt water and cold water. <laughs> I, like Victoria does the polar bear swim and I guess that's kind of like what people are doing today because it's not that warm out. <laughs> I need to do that because it helps with skin and a bunch of things too. I don't know all the things. I'll, I'll look that up next and then <laughs> I'll do a video one day where I jump into the sea when it's still cold. <gasps> anyway, I hope you enjoyed my video. I hope that this video can reach a lot of people and help people because I think this is like one of my most significant, most important videos that I could make. The other ones are more so about me and my experiences, but this is about information that I just wish a lot of people had access to and I think it should be funded by the government and people every single person should be able to have this done for free and not have to pay so thank you for so much for tuning in please like comment subscribe um share with someone who's suffering with all these like food sensitivity symptoms again fatigue constipation psoriasis eczema joint pain bloating acne diarrhea brain fog nausea throat mucus headaches 
migraines, impaired weight loss, so struggling to lose weight, which I'm sure that almost every single person you know struggles with at least one of these on this list. So yeah, thank you for your time and have a good day. Victoria might be another community, but it's around Victoria. Victoria is expensive, but I traded a home with a yard and a career I love to live in a place that's just beautiful and healing. And I could spend hours just looking and finding rocks.